Hey everyone, Rob Doherty with robswildlife.com coming to you from uh, Farmington Bay, Utah. This is pretty much the place where, uh, where my career in, uh, in wildlife photography started. Uh, years ago I was uh, on Flickr and I, I found the bald eagles that were out here and uh, came out here and, and, and took pictures of them and that's, that's basically what inspired me and, uh, and, and kind of launched my career in, in wildlife photography and the tours. So back out here and uh, I just wanted to give you some tips uh, tips that I never had when I was starting out and uh, it just uh, I'd like to save you guys some some time and, and trouble of trying to figure things out on your own and I shoot in full manual mode but I understand some people aren't comfortable with that and uh, so I recommend uh, exposure value the TV button on Canon's um, Honestly, I, I can't remember what uh, what Nikon calls it, but it's it's the exposure uh, value. You care about the speed. Uh, you, you don't want a blurry picture. You don't want an eagle or an owl or um, any, anything else blurry. You want it tack sharp. And the only way you're going to get that is, is with a higher shutter speed. So I, I've been out with people and, and, and they swear by uh, the aperture value. Well, if you were shooting it... A, 5.6 or 6.3, that's going to probably drive your uh, drive your your shutter speed way down, and and thus resulting in, in some blurry shots. So, if if you're not going to go full manual, I, I suggest for shooting wildlife, uh, use the exposure value, and and you know for birds in flight, um, taking birds taking off stuff like that, I recommend uh, like a thousand, maybe 12.50 if uh, if if the lights permit, and with, with with today's cameras, you can pump that ISO quite a ways up and, and you're not going to get uh, get a lot of uh, grain and and, uh, and noise out of that so that's probably one of my my, my biggest tips uh, as, as far as uh, as a camera setting uh, we'll, we'll get into my favorite here at the end of this video it's changed my life and it's, uh, it's it's changed a lot of people that I've taught over the years shooting from a blind like this if you're shooting from birds you're gonna get them in a lot closer they're not gonna get spooked um, you're gonna get them doing natural things not uh, not on the edge uh, worried about you know them getting uh, getting attacked by humans and stuff so we want them to be comfortable shooting from inside a car is always uh, always the best option if you can um, if you can't shoot from inside maybe uh, shoot from the other side of the car so you know it's, it's breaking up your silhouette and, and just uh, just you're just not right there in the bird's face being patient especially when it comes to bird photography um, you can you can sit uh, on an eagle for hours and hours and uh, you know he may not ever take off but sometimes you may roll up and and he'll uh, he'll be there for a couple minutes and take off but you have to be ready um, you, have, you have to have him pre-focused finger on the shutter butter just shutter button and just ready to go so very very important uh, to exercise patience and and don't don't do things to disturb the animals and, and birds um, to, to get them to fly or get them to do things you know that's just not right that's that's not what um, wildlife photography is about to give the animals a break and, and uh, you just just let them let them do their thing naturally and, and uh, enjoy photographing them uh, the way they're meant to be just enjoy them Another thing is uh, birds in flight and, and, and other birds, I recommend a telephoto lens. Uh, right here I've got this, uh, it's a Tamron 70 to 200, just picked it up the other day. Honestly, I've only shot uh, maybe 15 uh, frames through it, so I'll be doing a video on that later and uh, give, you, uh, <clears throat> give you my opinions on that. I've had the Canon 70 to 200, I hear this is better. Um, we're going to find out, in, uh, and so watch for that video. But uh, certainly a telephoto when you're doing, uh, you know, birds in flight and, and stuff like that, because they may take off and you want to zoom out and, and, and get a little more of that, or um, it, it's, it just always varies. Keep your frame rate on the highest speed. Uh, some people like just the single shot. Um, if you do that, you're not going to get like the full wings and in, in, uh, when when they're taking off, clear up in the air. Or uh, you know, coming around in in the in the front. Birds in flight are hard, um, but once you get it down, it's so rewarding, and and, and you'll love it. But uh, be persistent. We have a lot of seagulls out here and stuff, so we'll uh, you know I I bring people out here and, and I'll have them practice on seagulls because they're very slow, predictable, and you can track them really easy. 
Um, and then once you get that, then, you know, maybe move on to some other birds, you know, like, like the eagles and the owls and stuff like that. And just practice, practice, practice. You can't come out here once a month, once every couple months, and, and expect to, to get, you know, the images like the, like the pros are getting because they're putting in the time. They're out here, you know, daily, uh, if, if not several times a week, getting the shots, honing their skills, and uh, learning more about the animals and, and their camera gear. The last, the last tip, and, and really uh, one of my, my favorites, is back button focus. And uh, I'm going to be doing another video on that, uh, showing you the details of that. But you can just uh, go to YouTube and put in your camera model and then put back button focus. And basically that takes away the, the focusing from your shutter. So that's just metering and taking the picture. But your focus is 100% on, uh, on one of the back buttons here. Let's see if I can show you here, basically. You know, I, I use the button right there, and uh, I went from, you know, which wasn't bad. I, 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 I estimate about 75% in focus keepers. Um, maybe not the, the shot I want, but they would be in focus. Uh, so 75%, not really bad rate, but when I started using back button focus, it went to about 98%, uh, 98, 99% of in focus. I mean, very, very, I'm shocked if I get an out of focus picture. Um, because I'm using back, back button focus. So watch for that video on that. Uh, YouTube it and, and, and find out you know how to do it on your camera. Uh, but the, the most important thing, I've, I've seen people do that, they'll, they'll set up the back button focus and they won't disable the shutter focus. Um, that really does no good at all. When you're holding the back button focus down, you can pan, stay with the animal, uh, or the bird uh, in this case, and uh, it just stays right on it. You've locked the focus on. And, and you, you'll you'll get so much uh, more percentage sharper images. So back button focus, it's the key. If you have any questions, just uh, put them in the comments below and, and I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer those for you. Or shoot me an email. I love to answer questions, help people um, kind of get a leg up because it took me years to figure out all this stuff and the camera setting. I didn't have anybody um, helping me. Uh, back then YouTube wasn't uh, wasn't what it is today with tips and tricks and, and everybody wanting to share stuff there you have it from uh, Rob Doherty robswildlife.com check me out I do uh, I do images photo tours workshops I got an Alaskan brown bear uh, workshop coming up in June of, of 2018 here and uh, it's gonna be fantastic Katmai National Park uh, just just an incredibly beautiful place so check that out and uh, any other questions you have um, maybe stuff I've covered stuff I haven't covered just go ahead and throw it in comments I'd love to answer your questions for you so you have a great day thanks a lot